Hello. So you bought a new S-Class. That's good. You've selected a remarkable piece of machinery, but it's a lot more than a machine. The 2000 S-Class is designed to be more complete than any other car on the road. And while it may be quite complete, it's also pretty simple to operate once you get the hang of it. That's where this video comes in. We'll show you how many of the features of the S-Class work. Soon it will all be second nature. For more in-depth coverage, please consult your operator's manual. This video is arranged by section and topic. We'll start outside, then work our way through the interior. Later on, you can review the parts you want to see again by fast-forwarding until the topic number that you want appears down in the corner. The topic numbers are printed on the box this video came in. So sit back, relax. After you watch this video, we think you'll be able to get a lot more out of your new S-Class. Let's go over how to get in and why the remote smart key looks the way it does. This button, the one with the open padlock on it, unlocks the doors. It will unlock the driver's door and the fuel filler door if you push it once. Or all the doors and the trunk unlock if you push it twice. But that can be changed. Your operator's manual will show you how to reset the remote to open all the doors all the time if that's what you prefer. If the car's been in the sun, you can air it out before you get in. Just hold the unlock button while pointing the smart key at the infrared sensor located on either of the front door handles to open all the windows and the sunroof at once. You may have noticed, when you close your car door, you don't have to slam it. The door pulls itself snug for the last few millimeters. This button with the close padlock locks the doors or hold it down and it can close the windows and the sunroof for you. In the event of an emergency, you can hold down the red panic button. It will honk the horn and flash the headlamps. To cancel the panic feature, just hold the panic button down again. Press the trunk button on the remote. It has an open trunk shape on it and hold it. And the trunk lid swings open automatically. You'll really appreciate this when your arms are full. Here's the spare tire, tool kit, and fuse chart. If you have the optional CD changer, it goes right here. There's a button with a keyhole on it, above the license plate. When you're at a filling station, just unlock the driver's door from the inside. That will unlock the fuel filler door. By the way, you should always use at least 91 octane to get the best performance. The trunk button on the driver's door will open the trunk, unless the car is moving. There's a small key hidden inside the remote. If a valet is parking your car and you want to keep the trunk off limits, use this key to lock the trunk by hand and take it with you. It can lock the glove compartment too. If you have the Mercedes cell phone, you can even create a security code to protect your built-in phone directory. That's something your operator's manual covers in detail. And as you leave your car, you can close the windows and sunroof with the remote. Remember to point the remote at the sensor. When you park at night, you can program the headlamps to stay on for up to a minute to light a path. Your operator's manual will show you how to choose the duration of this lighting. Before you can adjust the seats, the ignition key has to be at position one or two, or else one of the front doors must be open. This seat-shaped button moves the corresponding parts of the seat. The easiest way to start out is to sit in the driver's seat and move the seat forward or backward until the pedals are the right distance. Then you can use the E button. The E stands for ergonomic. 
The E button will automatically move all the other adjustments close to where you'll want them. Then use the seat-shaped controls to fine-tune your position up to 14 ways. For a better fit, just pull the head restraint open. Adjust both side mirrors with these buttons. You adjust the inside rear view mirror with your hand. The steering column can be moved with this stock at the left of the column. Move it in toward the dash and the column goes in. Move it down and the column lowers. In order to reduce the possibility of injury from a deploying airbag, make sure the wheel is at least 10 inches from your chest. Now press the M button and either the number one or the number two button on the door. Now all the settings are stored, even the inside mirror you adjusted by hand. By the way, these buttons next to the memory buttons are for the heated front seats. You can do even more to improve your view out the back. If no one is sitting in back, just press the remote head restraint retractor button on the dash and the rear head restraints go down, giving you a clearer view out the back window. Even getting out is enjoyable. The steering wheel can be set to rise up out of your way when you remove the key from the ignition. Normally, children under the age of 12 should only sit in the back seat. However, there are Mercedes-Benz accessory child seats that can be used in front. These special Baby Smart compatible seats contain a transponder that reflects a signal which is sent out by an antenna in the front passenger seat. This turns off the front passengers front airbag. When it's detected, this yellow warning light comes on. But you have to be careful to install this seat properly and only use a Baby Smart compatible seat. There's a switch located between the window switches on the driver's door panel that prevents kids from playing with the rear windows. You can open each window all the way with a single touch and also close it all the way with a single touch. This works for each of the four windows. The sunroof opens when you slide this button on the overhead console in the direction you want the sunroof to move. But if you move the button past the point of resistance, the sunroof will express open. It has a memory feature. If you just open the sunroof part way, the next time you use express open, it will remember where you stopped it last time. It will open all the way if you press the button again and hold it back. The screen in the center console is for the command system. It controls the audio and navigation systems and the optional cellular phone. The command controls do similar things for all of the systems. We'll cover the radio first. Turn the system on down here. Then press radio up here and it will come on. Use this dial to scroll through the choices on the screen, kind of like a computer mouse. Then push it in to make your selection. Push above the mouse dial to raise the volume and below to lower it. These always control volume. In the radio mode, these bars to the left and right control tuning or station seeking up and down. Tap quickly to seek, hold longer to tune. These are your 10 presets for each radio band. But you can also dial in a station's frequency directly. If you want station 104.3, just enter star 1043 and you're there. Once it comes up, press a number and hold it in, and you've just set that memory button to that station. Your command manual and quick tips explain the more advanced features. Now we'll try the tape player. The tape player starts on its own. Tap these bars to the left or right of the dial to go back one track or forward a track. If you hold them down, they rewind or fast forward. To hear the other side of the tape, scroll with the mouse button to side two, then press it and the other side will start to play. To eject a tape, press the top left button. The optional CD changer goes in the trunk. This slot under the screen won't play any music CDs. It's just for navigation CD-ROMs. If you have a CD changer, you can activate it by pressing the CD button 
which starts playing the first track of the first CD automatically, or else wherever you left off the last time it was on. Or you can choose the CD you want to play. Just enter the number, one through six, on the keypad, and it plays that disc. Now if you want to skip forward or backward through the tracks, use the bars to either side of the mouse button, and you can go forward or backward through the tracks. There are many more instructions in the command manual. You can even enter CD titles, but this should get you started. The command navigation system works off three reference points. A satellite positioning signal, which is usually available whenever you're out in the open. The speed and direction your S-Class is going. And a CD-ROM full of maps and information for your part of the country, which comes with your S-Class free of charge. You can purchase CD-ROMs for other areas from any Mercedes-Benz center. The CD-ROM goes in this special slot. To get started, push the Navi button above the keyboard. Before you start your trip, scroll through to address with the mouse and choose city and enter the name. You only have to select a few letters to get a list with all the towns that start that way. Then just scroll down to the town you want and push to confirm it. Now do the same thing for the street and it narrows down your choices here too. Select the street you want, and now you get to choose the kind of route you want. You can choose fastest route for the least time, shortest route for the least mileage, or you can choose certain roads to avoid on your own. Let's choose fastest route, and wait as it calculates the route from where you are now. The route is being calculated. It's all in your command operator's manual. The route has been calculated. Now the system will tell you how far you are from your destination. Follow the road until further instructions. And let you know where to turn before you get to each one. The system tells you, out loud, when to turn. If you don't catch it, press the repeat button and it will repeat. Follow the road until further instructions. As you'll see right away, it knows where you are. Now look at the map and you'll see where you are on your route, which is highlighted in blue. Now look at the keyboard. It has tiny arrows that let you move the map. To zoom in, press the star button. And use the number key to zoom back out. All the command programming at the center console, whether audio, navigation, or phone, should be done while the car is parked, not while you're driving. As you're driving, the system will give you spoken instructions and the information you need will appear on this screen in the speedometer face along with other important information. One of the many benefits is that you can use the navigation system's spoken directions while driving and keep your eyes on the road. Keep in mind, roads may have changed since the CD-ROM was made so the maps may contain some errors. As you drive, always be aware of the latest road indicators and traffic or directional signals. If you have an optional cellular phone, it's part of the command system too. Push the telephone button and it's on. Now you can dial a phone number by punching it in on the numeric keypad. After entering all the digits, push the mouse button to send and the call is started. If someone answers, the radio is automatically muted. You can also call up a number that you've stored in the memory. Your command manual will show you how to store it. You can access the number by voice using the steering wheel controls. For safety, you should only use the phone while you're parked. When the engine is running, make sure the phone is placed in its cradle in the center console and connected with the coiled cord to avoid interference with the vehicle's electronic system. You can use this button to answer the phone. You use this button to hang up or to refuse a call. Once you've turned on the phone, you can press the microphone button at the lower left, then just say, dial number out loud. The system will respond out loud. Say the telephone number, and the system will confirm it out loud. And if it's okay, just say send, and it will dial the number. Many of the more frequently used features of the S-Class can be controlled with your fingertips, right from the steering wheel. This scrolling button, 
changes the screen from the odometers to the audio system to dialed or stored telephone numbers to your next navigation instructions to the trip computer to warnings about malfunctions, if any, to programmable settings like the headlamp mode. You can choose to turn them on yourself, have them on all the time when the car is running, or have them come on automatically when it gets dark. You can adjust the lights inside the car, too. You can choose how long you'd like interior courtesy lamps to stay on after you've shut the door. And you can decide how long you want the headlamps to stay on after you park. This allows you time to continue on foot with a lit path. You can choose to have them stay on for up to a minute, or not at all. For safety reasons, the programmable vehicle settings can only be changed when the car is stopped. You can access all of these things and more from these switches on the steering wheel. Even if you don't have an optional cellular phone, the S-Class comes with a mechanism to permit a direct live voice link to people who can help you with any problems. The tele-aid system is made up of three buttons that have their own connections to a dedicated cellular network. You have to subscribe in order to use these buttons. You automatically get a year of monitoring services and 30 minutes of airtime at no cost when you subscribe. This is the I button. It connects you to people at Mercedes-Benz who can give you information, for example, about how to use your car or where to find a nearby Mercedes-Benz retail center. Client assistance, this is Ellen. You can just talk right back. There's no need to use any controls. You don't even have to hang up when you're through. The person on the other end terminates the call for you. This button with a wrench shape on it will connect you with people at Mercedes-Benz roadside assistance who have years of experience helping Mercedes-Benz drivers with problems with their vehicles. In some cases, they will even be able to access your warranty service history. Using the wrench button is a lot like using our 800 number for roadside assistance, except you don't need to find a phone, and the person who answers immediately knows your location and the color, model, and VIN number of your car, which makes it easier to send help quickly. Roadside assistance, this is Bob. Roadside assistance includes several sign and drive services free of charge. If you run out of fuel, they'll send out enough to get you on your way. If you need a jump start, they'll provide it. And if you have a flat, they'll come and install your spare. The SOS button is up here. It will connect you to someone at our emergency response center who will summon police or rescue if needed. It's monitored by people who already know what your car looks like and where it is. Welcome to the Mercedes-Benz Response Center. This is David. How may I assist you? This system is also activated automatically if an airbag or emergency tensioning retractor deploys. Even if you can't talk back, the SOS system can still send help. You can also use the SOS button to contact the appropriate authorities through the monitoring services if you see someone else who needs help. This is the on button for the climate control system. These climate controls treat both sides of the car as separate zones. Each side has individual temperature controls and a button that lets you choose automatic control or your own settings. If you pop the auto button out, you can set the airflow direction for your side. This central button controls the fan speed or push it in and it's automatic too. If you prefer, you can also leave one or both sides at the 72 degree year-round setting. You can choose to have ventilation without the air conditioner by pushing the economy button. You can turn on the defroster two ways, with this single button for full speed defrosting or with the auto button directing the airflow to the windshield. In this mode, you can choose the temperature and fan speed yourself. This is for the heated rear window and here's the air recirculation button in case the air inside is fresher than the air outside. And this button is for the activated charcoal filter to help clean the air coming into your car. 
If you push and hold either the recirculation or the charcoal filter button, the windows and sunroof will all close and the activated charcoal and dust filters will start to purify the air inside the cabin. Press and hold the button again and the windows lower all at once. This rest mode uses the warmth of the engine to help keep the cabin warm for up to 30 minutes after you park and turn off the engine, a detail you'll appreciate if you need to wait for someone on a cold day. The climate control has a sun sensor which helps keep everyone comfortable even if one side is getting more sunlight. Seat belt usage sensors help the climate control system to focus on people rather than empty seats. And there's a humidity sensor that helps to keep the air in the car from getting too dry. And now the lights. The combination light switch at the far left of the dashboard controls the headlamps, parking lamps, and fog lamps. In the straight up position, it's off. Turn the switch to the right one notch to turn on the parking lamps. Anytime the lights are on, whether you turn them on or they come on automatically, this green indicator will illuminate. Now turn it all the way to the right. This turns the headlamps on. You control the high beams and low beams with the stock. When the lights are on, pulling the switch out from the dash one notch turns on the front fog lamps. A second green indicator lamp will come on next to the switch. If you pull the switch out two notches, the single red rear fog lamp comes on in addition to the front fog lamps. A yellow indicator lamp will come on next to the switch. You should only use the rear fog lamp in foggy weather because it can be very bright for people driving behind you. When the car is switched off, turning the switch to the left turns on the standing lamps, which are the parking lights for one side of the car at a time. As we mentioned before, you can use the steering wheel controls to choose whether to have the headlights come on whenever you drive, only when it's dark, or only when you turn them on with this switch. Even the storage spaces have character. If you open the vent inside, the center console will be heated or cooled along with the climate control. The first aid kit goes down here, below the front passenger's knees. A similar compartment under the driver's seat can hold your compact umbrella. Unlike other keys, the key for your S-Class doesn't operate mechanically. It reads a code through the infrared lens at the tip. The key and the car's computer generate identical codes on a random basis every time you start your car. So you don't have to crank the ignition the way you do on other cars. Just turn it and let go gently. The S-Class features the touch shift automatic transmission which gives you manual style shift control when the selector is in the drive range. You can downshift by tapping it to the left, or tap it to the right to let it upshift. This display in the tachometer will tell you what gear range you've selected. You can also use it like you would any automatic transmission by leaving it in D. Even then it will adapt to the way you're driving and time is shift to help you get the most response, or if you prefer more leisurely drive, the most economy. There's a win mode switch by the shifter. Set it to W, for winter or wet, and it will start out in second gear, even in reverse, for better control on slick, wet surfaces. Set it to S for normal first gear starts. The cruise control is fairly easy to figure out, but only use it if the traffic and weather permit, and never use it if the road is icy or covered with snow. To set it at your current speed, hold it upwards briefly. Keep holding it upwards and it accelerates, to increase the speed in one mile per hour increments, tap it upwards. To lower your speed, hold the lever downwards. To do it in one mile per hour increments, tap it down briefly. To resume your speed after canceling it, just tap the lever towards you. To turn the cruise control system off completely, just tap the brake or tap the lever forward towards the dash. The adaptive damping system constantly adjusts the suspension's firmness at every wheel. But instead of ordinary springs and shocks, the S-Class rides on a computer-controlled cushion of compressed air using special air struts. 
If you have to drive on a road with ruts or deep snow, you can raise the car by nearly an inch with this button. It automatically returns to normal after five minutes of 55 mile per hour driving. At other times, the ride height is automatically adjusted. When you drive at higher speeds, the S-Class automatically lowers itself by more than half an inch to maximize aerodynamics, and this can result in better fuel efficiency. The sport mode firms up the suspension in corners so that you can maneuver with sharper response. When you set your windshield wiper switch to the number one setting, a sensor automatically measures the rainfall hitting the windshield and then adjusts how often the wiper makes it sweep. Your four-year, 50,000-mile limited warranty covers any manufacturing defects. Routine service, as described in the maintenance manual, is now free of charge during the warranty period. The details are in your warranty package. As you flip through the screens with your steering wheel controls, you'll come to the flexible service system. It measures the actual condition of your engine's oil and monitors your driving habits. Then it continually recalculates when your next service is due, on the fly, so it can extend the interval between routine servicing, and it will let you know exactly when it's coming up. Congratulations on choosing the S-Class. As you might have noticed, it's not just a car. It's really a whole new experience. If you have any questions this video and your operator's manuals don't answer, we're easy to get hold of. Just call us at 1-800-FOR-MERCEDES. Or even easier, just press your I button. Or check out our website at mbusa.com.